Okay, so the last thing in this chapter that I want to go over is inverse trig functions. Now, probably how you've seen like arc sine and arc tan before was like this, where it had the little negative one like that, and it means inverse. It doesn't really mean, it doesn't mean at all to the negative one power, it means inverse. Okay, so just to kind of emphasize this, what y equals arc sine of x, what that really means is that x equals sine of y. They're inverse functions. Um, okay, and we're going to take the derivative, and I'm going to prove to you why the derivative is the way it is. And notice we're only doing this for arc sine and arc tan. We're not going to do this for arc secant and all the other ones. Those just don't really show up, or they're not really used in application. So if you want to learn those, they're in your book. Um, you know, learn to your heart's content. So I've rewritten it like this. If I want to take the derivative next, I have to do this implicitly because the y is not by itself anymore. Okay, so what would the derivative of the x be? 1, derivative of sine, cosine, so I would say cosine y, and since I'm deriving implicitly, and I just took derivative of a y term, i got to go times dy over dx. And then to get the dy over dx by itself, I would just need to divide. So this is going to be 1 over cosine y. And this would be great if all my problems were in terms of y, but they're in terms of x. Um, by the way, does anybody remember what 1 divided by cosine is with trig? Secant. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a triangle. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the first quadrant. And you may or may not remember all the trig I'm about to go over. It's okay if you don't, because in the end, what we're doing really right now, I'm proving to you why or how I'm going to come up with this new formula. So if x equals sine of y, then that means that y is the angle. Okay, and sine, if you remember with Sokotoa, was opposite over hypotenuse. And so I'm going to put this x over 1. So I'm going to put the x where the opposite goes, and I'm going to put the 1 where the hypotenuse goes. And then I'm going to determine, okay, well, what is secant of y? Okay, what's the ratio for secant? H over A. Okay, we know the H is 1 over. What about the adjacent? I don't know that. But I can find it because if you know two sides of a right triangle, you can find the third side. Okay, by using Pythagorean theorem. So whatever goes here, plus this thing squared plus X squared equals 1 squared. So what should go right where this question mark is? How can I write that in terms of 1 and x? 1 minus x squared is almost right. It's almost there. Square root it. So if you like knew the hypotenuse of a triangle and you knew one of the legs, you would do the hypotenuse squared minus the leg squared and you'd square root that to get the third side. And so that's what we have down here. And that right there is what the derivative of arc sine of x is. If you want to know how to derive arc sine of x, it's 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we're not always going to be doing arc sine of x. We might be doing arc sine of, say, 2x in this example. So we kind of saw this yesterday where we were using u. So in general, the derivative of arc sine of u will be 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. And then we got to multiply by, because remember u is probably more complicated than just an x. So this is like chain rule, so what do I need to multiply by? U, u prime. So we could write du, we could write u prime. And so before we get into arctan, let's go ahead and do the first example here. Okay, so arc sine of 2x. If you want to do this derivative, here's what I would do. I would just start by setting it up. 1 over the square root of 1 minus something <coughs> squared times something. That's how you do an arc sine derivative. The next thing is, okay, well, of what? 
okay, of 2x. And so then I got to multiply by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. And that's your answer right there. So yes, it is another formula, but it's really not, if you know the formula, it's really not that bad. Okay, and that's why I gave you those flashcards yesterday. So that you could study them. Um, if this was multiple choice, by the way, the two would be moved to the top. And probably the down here, that 2x squared would be changed to 4x squared with no parentheses. So this would be, you know, just for multiple choice purposes. You don't really need to simplify if it's open-ended. Just I know I say that all the time, but I just want to remind you. Okay, so that's how you do an arc sine problem. And there's a few more we're going to practice in a minute. But before we do those, let's go up here and let's talk about arc tan. So maybe this proof right here, you kind of understood parts of it, but not all of it. So if we go through it again, I think it will help. If you understand why the formula is the way it is, I think it makes it easier to remember. So first of all, how could I rewrite y equals arc tan x as x equals tan y? And remember, we're trying to figure out what the derivative is, so I'm going to derive implicitly. So I'm going to take derivative with respect to x, both sides. So derivative of x, just like last time, 1. And what's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared. So since I'm taking or I'm deriving tan y, it's going to be secant squared y, again, times dy over dx. I'm just doing the implicit differentiation. So the whole goal here is to figure out what the derivative is. So we get dy over dx by itself. And I do that just by dividing over that secant squared. Which, by the way, would be equal to cosine, cosine squared. And I'm even going to write it as cosine y and then in parentheses squared. Just to really emphasize that once I figure out what cosine of y is, I'm going to square that. So again, I'm going to draw a picture because if we were doing these problems in terms of y, that would be great, but we're doing them in terms of x, so I've got to kind of make the connection here. So I'm going to draw another triangle again. I'm going to keep it simple, keep it in the first quadrant. This time it says x equals tan y. So if y is the angle, again, if it's not a fraction, make it into a fraction, x over 1. So TOA, O over H, the X would go opposite and the 1 would go adjacent. See how last time the 1 was the hypotenuse. So if I want to figure out what cosine of Y is, okay, I need to do adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent's 1. Well, what's the hypotenuse? Okay, I don't know it. I have to figure it out. So before I had to subtract, what do I need to do in this case with Pythagorean theorem? Add. Add. So 1 plus x squared, and then we still need to square root that. So really, technically, we should be doing 1 squared, but what is 1 squared? 1. Good question. Okay, so let's go ahead and square this. Squaring a fraction, you square the top, and you square the bottom. In this case, I'm squaring a square root. So do I have the square root anymore? No. So here lies the main difference between arc sine and arc tan. Arc sine has a square root, and remember it had a minus. Arc tan does not have a square root, and it has a plus. Okay, I think that by going through this little exercise may help you remember. At the end of the day, you need to know these formulas. This is why I gave you flashcards, so that you could study them. 
So if I'm taking derivative of not just arctan of x, but of something more complicated, it would be 1 over 1 plus u squared still times u prime. And the times u prime, that's just an application of chain rule. So if you're like, Ms. Brooks, I don't understand at all how you come up with that formula. It's actually okay, because at the end of the day, you just have to use it. So using this formula for this example B, okay, we have a 3x instead of an x. So I'm doing arctan, so I'm using the arctan formula. It's going to be 1 over, and remember how I said you can kind of just set it up like that first and then deal with your specific problem. So in this case, it's arctan of 3x, so it's 1 over 3, 1 over 1 plus 3x in parentheses squared, and then what would you multiply by? 3, because it's the derivative of the inside part, the derivative of the 3x. And that's your answer. If this was multiple choice, probably the 3 would be moved to the top, and this would become 9x squared with no parentheses. And again, that's really just for multiple choice purposes that I'm kind of going through that. Okay, so that's it. No more new stuff. Let's apply it to some other problems, though. So like for C, arc sine, when you see that word arc, you need to be thinking, which formula am I going to use? I know it's one of those two. Which one? And that's going to be, I think, the hardest part is keeping the two of them separate. And anytime you're like, two more formulas, just be thinking, I'm so glad we don't have to do six new formulas, because that could be what we do. Some teachers actually teach all six. I don't really see a benefit in that, personally. That's why we're focusing on arc sine and arc tan. So once you figure out, okay, this is the one with the square root, it's the one with the minus, Okay, and again, you can even go as far as just filling in the blank. So square root of x would go right there. Now, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So what is the derivative of square root of x? 1 half x to the negative 1 half. If you're like, how'd they get that? They just remembered that that's x to the 1 half power. So they bring the 1 half down, subtract 1 from the power. And we're not going to really spend any more time today simplifying. Okay. Let's look at D. Arc tan. So we're like, hey, this is a tan problem. This is the one without the square root and with the plus. So that means I can go ahead and even set it up. And if you're like, I don't like to do it that way, you don't have to. So the e to the 2x is what goes in these little parentheses. And then now we got to remember what we learned yesterday. How do you take derivative of e to a power? Yep, e is for easy. You rewrite it and you times it by the derivative of the power. All right, that's a function within a function within a function. What does that make you think of? Peanut M&M. &M. Now, I didn't use the analogy here, but we could have. We could have gone through the steps that way, and that would have been okay as well. All right, and again, I'm not really going to simplify the rest of these. Okay, what about E? What do we need to do on E? Is it a product of it? Yes, but why? Yep, x is being multiplied to arc sine of 3x. Okay, there's no parentheses there originally. I put them in. Is arc sine being multiplied to 3x? It's doing of, right? Composition of arc sine of 3x. That's just a little bit of review. Because if you're really getting that stuff mixed up, it really makes a lot of these pretty confusing. Okay, so derivative of x, 1. I'm just using product rule here. Arc sine of 3x. See if you can finish this one on your own.
So X, and then what's next? One over square root one minus three X squared times three. Okay, what rule for example F? Quotient rule. You could actually get away with doing times x to the negative 1 and doing a product rule here. You could do that. I'm not going to. I feel like we need to practice quotient rule one more time. Some of you are, you keep forgetting that denominator. So maybe do that part first. All over the denominator squared. If that's you. If you're forgetting that part at the end. So this is just plain arctan x. So derivative of that, 1 over 1 plus x squared. If you put a time something here, you would put times one. Okay, now for quotient rule, we need to go times x, but for the derivative of arctan, <coughs> the derivative of just that x would be one. Okay, minus arctan x times one. And you could put parentheses here or not. And that's pretty messy, but that's okay. The whole simplifying thing, we'll just kind of take that as it goes, a little at a time. 